Um, so the purpose of today, um, folks, is to give you an early introduction um, to the internships and also to get you to start thinking about the, the journalism project dissertation. Um, now, there's, let me just say in advance, there's not a huge amount that, that you need to do now for several reasons, because I realise that uh, assessments have started. So between now and December, you're going to be tightly focused on, uh, on doing the best work that you can. Um, but you do need to make one decision before December the 18th, namely whether you want to do journalism project or dissertation. So that's one thing you need to do. And the other thing that I want you to start doing is to start thinking about internships. Now, with internships, everybody has, in my experience, a completely different set of circumstances to other people in the class. So it's difficult, really, for me to talk about internships with any great precision, because everybody's going to have their own situation. For example, I know that some of you have already had quite considerable journalism careers. Uh, for example, I know that some of you are based in overseas. You might be coming to the UK, you might not. Um, and of course, we don't know what's going to happen with COVID um, and so on. So there's lots of unknowns. There's lots of maybes and perhapses and howevers. Um, but what I'm going to do today with the internships is explain what the parameters are. In other words, what's acceptable and also what you need to do in terms of the the final assessment and it really is the final assessment so what I'm trying to do here is as we say to get ahead of the game so the internship report is actually your very last piece of work that you need to do um, which needs to be submitted sort of next summer if you can imagine that glorious period next year when we can go out and socialize and do stuff and enjoy life a bit more um, that's essentially when the, the assessment needs to be in um, so obviously I don't want you to do it now and I don't want you to worry about it too much now but I do want you to start thinking about internships. So we're going to talk, like I said, we're going to talk about two things, dissertation stroke journalism project and internship. So slide number two, let me just give you a, 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 um, an outline of, of what the choices are. And the key point folks is it is a choice and it's your choice. And what happens most years is students will come to me and say, well, what do you think, Gary? And, and I kind of very, you know, politely and diplomatic, diplomatically throw it back to the student. And I, I say, ultimately, at the end of the day, I can give advice, but it's your choice. So there's no difference in terms of the, the gravity of these choices. They're both 60 credits. So as you know, the autumn semester that you're finishing now is 60 credits. The spring semester, which will begin in January, is another 60 credits, and the final 60 credits is either the journalism project or the dissertation. So it's the equivalent of one whole semester's work. It, it's a lot of work, so please don't underestimate um, how important it is. And, and before you make a decision, what everybody needs to do individually is to think about your own career goals. So obviously it makes sense to take a choice that helps you move towards wherever you want to go. And like I said at the beginning, um, everybody's different. Everybody in this class um, has different career goals. You might not know what your career goals are. It took me a long time to figure out mine. You know, so it's perfectly normal if you don't want, if you don't actually know. So hence you need to make a choice that's going to give you the most options. And obviously something that you're going to enjoy and something that you're going to engage with. So it's very much your choice. I can advise your AGT can give you guidance but ultimately, it's your choice. The big moment uh, this uh, semester is Friday, December the 18th, which is officially the last day of, of school, essentially. Uh, that's when the university closes for the Christmas New Year period. Um, so can you please all make a note to let me know by that date? Now, I say that, and I know already from having tutorials with all of you, yes, all of you, I hesitated slightly, but I have actually spoken to all of you, I'm pretty sure that 90% of you want to do the journalism project, which is totally fine. And in fact, that is what the bureaucracy, in speech marks, assumes that you'll all be doing. Because if you remember in week one, you had to sign up for modules and I uh, approved them. And because of the way the system works, it automatically puts you down as journalism project. 
So if you want to do dissertation, you need to tell me explicitly, Gary, I want to do dissertation, definitely, and do this before Friday the 18th of December. In between now and then, if you've got any questions, you're not quite sure about a topic, you're not quite sure whether it's right for you, uh, you're not sure if you want to do a dissertation at all, then you can speak to me or you can speak to your personal tutor, could be the same person, me or your personal tutor, if you need any guidance. But just to stress, it's your choice. It's your choice. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> so let me tell you about the dissertation. Now, some of you, I know, did dissertations at your, um, in your uh, bachelor's degree. Uh, so you know what a dissertation uh, looks like and what it involves. Don't forget, this is MA. It's a really obvious point to make, but I'll make it again. An MA is a higher level. It's a bit like going from the national championships to the European championships. So um, a higher standard will be expected. So it's not just going to be a matter of recycling your undergraduate um, dissertation. That will not get you a good mark. Um, it's also slightly longer. I'll come on to that in a moment. So basically, the dissertation is a, an eight-month mission. As you'll see in a moment, it starts in mid-January with a proposal. And then it culminates in the submission of your final magnum opus um, of 15,000 words in August. Um, and in between those two dates, January and August, you will have extra tutorials uh, with your um, supervisor and he or she uh, will coach you and guide you in terms of research methods, in terms of phrasing your question, in terms of finding relevant literature that's uh, of work that's been done already. So during the um, spring semester you will have extra tutorials. They are not formal classes, so it's not going to be like every week at 11 o'clock on a Wednesday you'll meet your supervisor. It will be done uh, through mutual agreement with your supervisor uh, in terms of how often uh, you meet that person. And that there will also be regular submissions, so your supervisor will ask, well, but typically you will meet, have a discussion, your supervisor will send you away with a mission, and uh, you'll be given some time to do that mission. For example, writing your literature review. For example, writing your methodology. And the first draft, in other words, the first version, if you like, of your dissertation, um, you have a nominal deadline of June. And then in July and August, because, believe it or not, uh, we lecturers do need a break at some point, uh, July and August is basically the only time of year that we can take them. Uh, so that's when you will be doing what we call independent study. So by July, in my experience, if you've done some good preparatory work earlier in the year, by July you will be perfectly happy to work independently on your dissertation. But just be aware, this is an MA, you're all adults, and you, you shouldn't really expect us, I use the metaphor, hold to hold your hand all the way down the track. Towards the end of it, you need to sort of fly and do your own thing. Um, and that's how it is, I must admit, that's how it is with every MA dissertation at every university I've worked at. So by July, August, you will be confident, um, you'll be on a roll, and you'll be um, moving forward to the submission. Um, something else to be aware of. Uh, this is an academic piece of work, so this writing style, which you're probably coming to terms with now, you've been doing journalistic style so far uh, on the course, uh, but this will be the academic style, which is, um, I was going to say slightly different, it's very different in some ways. So if you're not comfortable with writing academic style, dissertation probably isn't for you. So it's not a piece of journalism. Um, it's not like a 15,000 word extended article. It is a dissertation, so it needs to be written in an academic style. So who would it be right for? Well, if you want to do a PhD, maybe, at some point in the future, um, an MA dissertation in journalism would be a, a, a good stepping stone. Uh, and also if you want to maybe do a career in research, whether it's political research, media research, or any other sort of re research, it could be um, useful as well. Uh, one thing I haven't put on this slide, folks, it's there by implication, um, but very, very important, um, is that the subject matter of your dissertation must be either journalism or the news media. So you, you can't really, I mean, if you're really interested in, I don't know, archaeology or something, you can't do a dissertation in archaeology. I hope that makes sense, but sometimes it's a bit of a grey area sometimes, 
So for example, if you want to, if you were fascinated by, I don't know, the Kardashian family, um, you, 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 you could do something about how the media represents the Kardashian family or how journalism covers the Kardashians, but you can't really do a, a sort of, you know, an anthropological sort of sociological analysis of the dynamics between the five sisters or something like that. That's, that's not academic, that's not journalism. That is kind of media, but it's not really journalism. So it needs to be something specific to journalism um, and or the news media. So that's what's involved with the dissertation. Um, let, me just, let me just move on and give you a bit more detail. In terms of the assessment, so this is what really counts. This is how you earn your marks. Slide number four. So as I said, it starts with a proposal. It's basically a one-page proposal in January uh, that, you, uh, that you need to uh, send to your supervisor and he or she will comment on the viability of it and, and so on and discuss it with you. And then between January and May, you need to do and submit a proposal stroke outline, which is 1500 words and it really extends the proposal and adds a lot more detail to it, how you're going to do it, what your topic is, what you anticipate the problems will be, your methodology, that sort of thing. So that's 20% of your mark for the whole uh, module. Uh, in May 2021. Um, you'll notice my note there, it says submission dates will be confirmed in the spring semester. Um, so I, I apologise for this because I know especially if you're travelling and if you're overseas it, it really helps you to have uh, precise deadlines. I'm sorry I can't give them to you at the moment. The reason is that five letter word as always COVID. Um, as, as I'll explain later when COVID arrived in March this year uh, we basically had to redesign the whole summer uh, semester. I'm amazed we ever did it, but we did it. And the students all successfully passed through the course, so we did something right. So there's, depending on where we are with COVID and various other things, I don't know when that deadline date's going to be precisely. All I can tell you is that in 2020, it was May. It was May, about, I think it was towards the end of May. This year, it might be slightly before, it might be slightly after, but it's going to be May-ish. And then the big submission, the magnum opus, your deadline is sometime in August. So you'll then have another three months between May and August uh, to complete the dissertation. So key point here folks, don't underestimate a dissertation. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of independent work. You have to be very self-motivated. You have to enjoy working by yourself because it, because it is a solo mission. Um, and you have to be comfortable with academic writing. And ideally, it needs to tie in with your career objectives as well. So based on my experience, and like I said, I've been doing this, po this role for, what, three years now, 90% of students take the journalism project occasionally somebody takes the dissertation but don't be swayed by your predecessors I'm just saying that to show you typically that journalism students they want to become journalists so they tend to do the journalism project but if you've got good reason to do the dissertation that option is there if you want to do it um, I'll take questions when I've gone through journalism project and then and then hopefully we can uh, combine answers because I'm sure some of you will have the same questions so so question uh, question slide number five journalism project so I, I gave you a sketch of this I think in week one uh, so let me give you a bit more detail so the journalism project um, as the name suggests it's journalism and it's a project unlike the dissertation it's the summer semester only so you don't need to do any preparation. I mean, obviously, think about ideas and think about wonderful journalism that you want to do. But you don't need to do any preparation in the same way that you need to do with the dissertation. So there's no proposal. There's, there's no um, 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 piece of work in, in May to do. Um, so the journalism project all happens in one big chunk in the summer. Uh, so, and again, there's not much detail here because of Covid again. So last year in March Covid arrived and the journalism project was due to start in May. So what we had to do is convert it from an on-campus module into an online cam uh, module uh, which took a lot of redesigning. So just rest assured that irrespective of what happens next year we have an alternative. If Covid is still with us, God forbid, 
we can still do journalism project but it will be done online it will be done remotely and amazingly and to their credit your predecessors did a really good job last year doing it remotely and the teachers for that matter so we can do that obviously we would prefer to do it in real life so if we can do it on campus the way that it would work is for 10 consecutive weeks for one day per week you would get together with the rest of the group in the newsroom in the new building in the new uh, media center with all the wonderful technology we've got and it would essentially be like a magazine office so what we're trying to do with the journalism project is replicate as much as possible how it would be in the real world so you will be coming up with ideas you will be working on design you will be doing all of the multimedia content the writing the social media the audio the video the photography you will learn about design and you will work in teams or maybe even one team to produce a magazine now i say there may be even one team normally what we've done is we've had one magazine one magazine uh, which you get a little bit of guidance from the, the tutor in terms of how the magazine should be, but the choice of material is all yours. Last year, because it was easier to do um, online, we actually had different groups. So the students broke up into different groups. Um, personally, I think the one big group works a lot better because it's a more substantial magazine and it's much more indicative of what you can expect in the real world. But again, I can't answer any questions about how we're going to do it next year. Just be aware that it's going to be, uh, to a large extent, group work, working with your colleagues. It could be all of you. It might be subdivisions. We don't know yet. Uh, but it will be group work to a point. It will be multimedia. And you will produce a high quality um, magazine at the end of it. So it's 10 consecutive weeks. Typically, for those of you who need to travel, it's probably going to be May, July, that, that kind of period. Again, don't hold me to that because we don't know yet. It depends on the five-letter word, as always, and various other things. Uh, but essentially, that's what it will look like. And um, the, how old is the MA now? I think this is year five, four, year four, five. And every year, we've had some great results uh, from uh, the students who've done this and they've produced some excellent professional standard magazines. So the next slide, number six. So the assessment, you remember what the assessment is for dissertation. You've got one deadline in May and another, another one in August. Uh, magazine, slightly different. Um, half of your mark will be essentially a group mark. So it will be your magazine as a whole. 50% of the mark will be uh, determined by that. And the other half of the mark is a portfolio. So you also need to submit a portfolio of 5,000 words of your own original journalism. Um, so again, you've got a choice what you can do. It can be different types of journalism. It can be different subjects. But obviously it needs to be high quality work. So 50% on the magazine and 50% on the portfolio. And in terms of the deadlines, the magazine is typically about June, end of June, again, depending on COVID and everything else. And your portfolio will be about a month later, so about July. So it, it, it ties in relatively well with the dissertation. But the, the key point about the journalism project is more intense. It happens over 10 weeks. It's practical. It's ideal for anybody who wants to work. Uh, in the media as a practitioner and, and a please note again my note there the precise details of teaching the, the teaching schedule the assessments and submission dates will be confirmed in the spring semester I'm sorry I can't give them to you now but they will be revealed in January which will hopefully give you plenty of time if you're booking flights or organizing trips or whatever it is to to get that sorted out so um, so just to confirm, just to conclude, journalism project or dissertation question mark. So can everybody let me know by Friday the 18th of December? Uh, as I said from conversations I've had with you and also based on the history of this course, I think most of you will go for journalism project, which is totally fine. Uh, likewise, if you want to go for the dissertation, that's totally fine too. I just want you to make sure, folks, that it's right for you. It's the right thing for you. I, I'm not going to pressure you in either direction, but if you need help, guidance, uh, a second opinion, um, then let's organise a tutorial or you can discuss it with your AGT and he or she can point you down the virtuous path. So th that's Dissertation Journalism Project. Any questions? 
Paris, go ahead. Uh, regarding journalism project, I would like to ask just uh, regarding magazine. Yeah. Is it one topic, 5,000 words, or m many topics, several? Uh, the, the way that it works, Harris, is, uh, and I, di I didn't design this, it was many years ago it was designed, but what the, the, the guide actually says is half of your words needs to be related to the magazine, and the other half can be about anything you want. So, for example, it, so for example if, you're, if you are working on a magazine that looks at sport, right, so half of it needs to be about sport, the other half can be about history, it can be about politics, it can be about human rights, it can be about anything. So, so that's that's what it says in 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 the brief. Uh, like I said, I didn't write. It's not just one topic, uh, five thousand words, but many topics. Yeah, yeah, essentially, but essentially, two and a half of the half of your your words can be about literally about anything, literally, literally. So, if you've got a specialist subject, I don't know, travel or politics or whatever it might be, you can devote it to the two and a half thousand words to it. But the other half, w to be honest, we're quite flexible on, on, on that. That's one of those rules which I didn't really understand the point of it when I took on the, the course. Um, but I think you'll have plenty of scope to do, to, to do a good job anyway. Thank you for explaining. No worries. Haifa. Yes, it's uh, regarding the project. You said 50% is from the group uh, effort. Yep. So it will be divided, and the other half, the, um, the other fifty percent. Yeah. And you said multimedia, video, and audio. So the journalistic project can be only a, a video um, project with audio to back it up without written material. Yeah, I mean you, you can do it however you like. That there's a what I call an exchange rate in terms. So if you do like a five minute um, a podcast or a five minute video piece then that equates to a certain number of words. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So, so you, is, sorry? But, but here's the, the, the real question. Does it have to be a report? Can I do a program? Is it just a podcast? What is it exactly? What is my limits? Because you said 2,000, uh, 2,500 uh, can be yours, which is fifty. Yeah, I mean, that. it's, it's, the thing is, Haifa, it's, what, what you need to do is like a tactical choice. And I, I have this conversation quite often a few months down the line with students and they say, well, I've, I've got all this work, these ideas, but I'm not sure what to put in more, my portfolio. So the thing is, you could do, for example, a 2,500 word feature article, right? Just one. You know, you can do that if you want, or you can divide it up and you can do five smaller articles. Or you could do a small podcast and a small video clip and then a profile and then a feature article. So you can do it however you want. But it, but it's your it's your personal choice as to how you divide it. So if you do one big article, and you're really committed to it, and you do it really well, fantastic, you'll get a good mark. But if you do a big article and you make a mess of it, then there's there's no there's no sort of return. You know. I have a video visual project. Will I need to give a word count? Yes, yes. Yeah, but it, but just be aware that, as you well know, um, video and audio, it's not it's very different to writing because there's a lot of editing involved, uh, and yeah. you know so and sometimes there's not many words, you know, uh, and yeah. so 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 you need to make a kind of strategic decision, but that that's not really something. Just be aware at the moment, Haifa, that you have the choice. It's multimedia, and you've got five thousand words to play with. How you divide that up is completely your choice. And the other, uh, the, the, the project with the group, how it will be determined? How would the decision will be made? How, 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 sorry, I can't hear you very well. How would the decision be made with? Uh, with the group project, how will the uh, decision make when it comes to direction? What we can do? Is it by voting or is it by? Um, is it established by the teachers? Right, good question. Now that depends. That It's a difficult one to answer, but I'll give you two scenarios, right? Because it all depends on whether we can do it as a group in real life. So what we've done in the past, when we've had a group of in real life, there has been some direction from the tutor. So the tutor will give you parameters over what the magazine should be. So previously, we've had a magazine that we call... I'll write it down for you. It's a weird... It's a weird name that that um, if you don't speak English as a first language you might not have heard it sleuth so the so up until last year the magazine we had one magazine it was called sleuth and sleuth basically was a sort of a, 
it, the, the target audience were, were, were young people, students, based around Roehampton. And one of the things that I was eager to do in future years was to expand that magazine and to make it maybe about South West London or make it, make it about issues facing people in South West London who don't have much of a voice. Right, so that's where we were this time, well, March last year, and then COVID happened. So what we did then is we, um, the, the, me and the other tutors, we decided to break it down because everybody was dispersed. So we said, you know, you can break into smaller groups and you can basically do what you want. So I can't really answer that question at the moment, Haifa. Just be aware that there's those two possible models so we and what what we're trying to do is replicate the real world and and personally i think if you want to replicate the real world if you work for a magazine you have to if you get a job for a magazine you have to work to that magazine's brief so if you work for the new statesman you have to write for the audience of the new statesman so i want to kind of replicate that to a large extent so the tutor in my mind would give you a general market this is what you're aiming at and that's what the, everybody would work out, and which is how it would work in the real world. Um, in terms of the group itself, we also want to encourage you as a group to decide amongst yourself who's going to do what responsibilities. So you might, for example, have a features editor who will be in charge of features. You might have a, a video or an audio video editor, and he or she will be in charge of, the, of that side of things. But that's all down to negotiation and discussion. The reason we do this, of course, is because that's how it works in the real world. So we want to get you involved in the idea of working as groups because it's really, really, really common in the media world, as you know, Haifa, because you've done some work in the, that world, right? So you will depend on editors and producers and uh, researchers and so on, and presenters and so on. Um, so the idea is that, that, that that's why we have the group work, because it's a group effort. It's like a football team or a cricket team or a rugby team. If, if, if the whole team wins, then you win. So it's in everybody's interest to pull together. And uh, you know all this, Haifa, right? You've done enough of this in your in your short but glorious career so far. Thank you. Okay, any more questions, folks? Okay, so, so have a think about, um, about what we've just been talking about. Um, the, the, the journalism project, it's the, your predecessors. What I'll do is I'll see if I can find some examples of previous year's work to give you an idea of what they can do, uh, what they've done in the past. Uh, I, th I think this year, actually, because there are quite a few of you already have some journalistic experience. So I think if you got together on a magazine, I think it'd be a work of art. I really do. You know, but there again, you might, depending on where you're at with your life, with your career, with your desires, uh, you know, career wise, then dissertation might be the right thing. OK, but you know where I am if you have any more questions. Right. So uh, let's move on. <clears throat> OK, slide eight, slide eight internships. <coughs> I'll just briefly say, just remind everybody about internships. I'm sure you know all this, uh, but you know why they're important. Obviously, it's important to have real life experience. And don't forget, our MA is accredited to the PPA, as I keep reminding you. And one of the requirements of accreditation is internships. Um, so a lot of MAs don't have internships. At all. I've worked on M MAs where there's no internships at all. Um, so there is, it's really important because it, it, what we're doing with internships is, is linking what you've learned to the real world. That's the whole point. So you can go into a, a, a job or an internship and you can, you know, you can implement all the things that you've learned about law and feature writing and, and audio visual and, and so on. Um, obviously, internships look really good on your CV or your resume, whichever word you prefer. And clearly you'll make great contacts, make new friends and all that. The fourth point really is, is in many ways, I think the key one, uh, because the, I know everybody's different in this class, but typically you're all quite young, early 20s or so. And even though I'm really old, I remember that period. And it's very difficult when you're young to deal with disappointment and rejection. The older you get, you have more practice of it so you can deal with it. And I would say that that is one of the life's biggest skills. You know, anybody can smile and have a good time when the sun's shining, okay? But when it's raining, metaphorically, and you're having a really bad day, if you can still remain relatively content and, and uh, sensible, then you're, you're halfway down the road to enlightenment, really. So dealing with disappointment and rejection, I put it in speech marks because it's not really, 
um, learn how to deal with disappointment and rejection is a really important skill in life and no matter how good you are folks when you apply for internships I guarantee that some people won't answer your emails other people will say thank you but no thank you other people will you know just disappear you know so you and you need to learn how to deal with that so that's one of the reasons another reason why you have internships and the other one of course is learning how to promote yourself how to to write a really good email or to, how to structure your CV where to find work and so on so it's all really good practice for the real world okay so that's the reasons why so the requirements slide nine <coughs> the internship is connected to this module next year called journalism enterprise and employability which I abbreviate to JEE -E. so one of the assessments assessment number three is the internship report so the two things are tied together and to get your MA to be awarded your MA you must complete an internship and submit the uh, appropriate assessment uh, this will actually be your very last piece of work gosh it seems like another century doesn't it but it's actually only what 10 months away only 10 months away so you need to do it by September the 1st 2021 again that date will be confirmed that was the date that this year's students had basically end of August so your date will not change by very much and what you're required to do folks is and this is one of those sort of new age university words you are required to engage for 30 days with this part of your mission I'll explain what that means in the next slide and you have a choice you have a choice you can either do what I call the traditional internship where you find an organization who's prepared to give you work experience so you just for example a magazine OK magazine hello magazine for a certain period one internship that you could do it that way you could do it multiple so you could work a few days for OK magazine and a few days for the New Statesman and a few days for the BBC maybe or you can do what I call the freelance um, option now as a freelancer which is what I was for many years you will basically pitch ideas for journalism say articles you'll pitch ideas to different magazines different newspapers different websites that counts as activity and then you will research the article and then you will write the article so that all of that activity is basically what a freelancer does and at the end of it you'd send out an invoice and get paid hopefully but let's not worry too much about that so you can do one internship multiple internships essentially like a job or you can operate as a freelancer you can operate as a freelancer doing all the things that freelancers do and I'll come on to that in one moment or you can do a combination you could do three days at OK Magazine you could pitch a load of articles and write them up and so on and then you could work at somewhere else so you can mix it all together I'm happy so long as you do the sufficient amount of time with the with the right organizations and you submit a good internship report at the end of it okay so you've got quite a lot of scope here let me just reiterate something folks don't worry too much about internships right now I just want you to be aware of what is involved when it comes to starting the mission so let's talk about engagement so this is a, a, a little screen grab from last year's um, briefing document and, and I will provide you with an updated version of this uh, in the near future. So what it says in the briefing document, we give a target of 30 days engagement with professional journalistic or related work. This does not mean, however, that you need to do 30 days of 9 to 5 work. If you work that out, that's 240 hours doing journalistic work. Instead, you need to demonstrate that you have focused on career building professional activities over a protracted period it is strongly recommended that you avoid doing this in one intense month it happens every year I warn students some students say right July I'll start now and they spend the whole of August every day in August doing it all don't try to avoid that folks try to do a little often hence you have a target of 120 hours so that's your target of suitable productive work which you can accumulate between now and the end of August and then these hours need to be logged in an activity diary so in other words and I, again it takes me back to when I was a freelancer I would spend hours and hours and hours trying to find work writing pitch emails thinking of ideas 
So that's activity, but you're not actually doing any productive work. That is all behind the scenes. But you can count that sort of work towards your activity. Okay, so that's the difference between the 30 days. So you're thinking about, you're engaged for 30 days. It can be 10 days this month, 10 days next month, 10 days further down the track. But essentially, you have a target of 120 hours, which equates essentially to 15 days. 15 days. So let's move on to slide 11. I'll show you what... what oh, let's talk about assess, assessments first. <clears throat> so what you will need to do at the end of all this, folks, is, and this is worth 50% of your mark for JEE. So it's a big chunk of your, of your mark for JEE. So you need to write a 1500 word internship report in which you discuss and reflect on your experiences. So typically a good internship report, it will say, you know, it was really good that I learned how to write a feature article because I was writing feature articles for my whole time working for this magazine and I used the techniques that Adam taught me and lo and behold, my work was really good that sort of stuff. So reflecting on what you've learned and then uh, expressing it in a, in a professional context. The second thing you need to do is a simple activity diary and I'll show you an example in a moment in table format that shows what you did and when. That's a maximum of a thousand words. And the third thing is evidence of notable activity. For example, copies of emails you exchange with editors. Um, screen grabs, cuttings, PDFs of any work published during the internship. So that's like an appendix that shows us, the people who are marking it, um, that you've been doing uh, notable work. So three things. The most difficult one of those three is the internship report. It's actually quite difficult to write because you've only got 1500 words and you need to explain to the reader um, what you learned, what real life was like compared to the classroom, you know, um, uh, how you came up with ideas and how you did your job, what surprised you, what amazed you, what disappointed you about your internship, you know. So it's a reflection of your time uh, in a professional environment. So here's the activity diary. Next slide. Um, so what you need to do is every, every time you do something that is that a typical freelancer or somebody looking for work would do, just make a note of it. So May the 1st, uploaded, um, updated professional promotional website and added four new pages. Uh, also on May the 1st, apply for an internship, etc, etc. So you need to log your hours as you go along. Do it week by week. Don't give a huge amount of detail. Just explain what you did. And it's, it's quite good from your point of view, as well as mine, if I'm marking it, it's good for your point of view because you can see that you're making progress. So within just one week there, if you just do those, what, six, seven things, that's 24 hours already, you know. So you've chipped away at, uh, about, what, about a sixth, about 16, 17 percent of, of your overall um, allocation. So that's the activity diary. Just make a note of what you do and uh, and when you do it but it, obviously you don't make a you know don't sort of say you know I, I sharpened my pencil or something you know I mean that that doesn't really count so it needs to be something substantial something productive involved in the world of work uh, slide 13 what type of activity um, so working in a magazine office um, so that's a typical internship day that's how it was before before COVID um, actively pitching journalism ideas to editors that's definitely a relevant activity. Uh, completing freelance commissions, etc. Uh, writing and promoting a journalistic blog, not a personal blog, please, folks. So don't tell me about your, you know, your personal life. It needs to be something which comments on, I don't know, the American elections or on um, Boris Johnson's latest, uh, latest escapades or whatever it might be. But intelligent, serious stuff. You know, so th so there's a lots of lots of things that you can classify as activity. And uh, the note at the bottom, it's important. You do need to do a variety of productive, positive, and focused work. So if you just sit on your bed for six months and tweet, that doesn't really count. Likewise, Instagram or any of the other uh, social media. So have a read of that at your leisure, and you'll get an idea of what's permissible. I'm sure you're all sensible enough to know what constitutes productive work. So let's just go through responsibilities, internships, your responsibilities. Um, and as I keep saying, I've said since week one, what we're trying to do is prepare you for the real world. Um, so, and, and I know that some MAs and, and BAs in particular, the tutors kind of hold your metaphoric hand and do everything for you. Those days are over, unfortunately, for good reason, because the next step after this course is that you will be in the real world of media. 
So this, this is an introduction. So we're still there supporting, advising and guiding, but you need to take the initiative and you need to take the responsibility for the key steps in this process. So finding internal, uh, suitable internships. First of all, obviously applying. So getting your CV looking like it's absolutely the best it can be filling in application forms, maybe going for interviews, etc. We can't do that for you. That's your responsibility. Negotiate with the employer which days you're going to work, which times you're going to work, what your duties are, and hopefully the money. Now, I say hopefully because I don't know about in other countries, but in the UK for the last 10 years, and I don't know how it happened, but internships now are basically unpaid. And I have a real issue with this for the simple reason that it discriminates against the majority of us who don't have rich parents. And if you've got rich parents, it's okay having internships because your parents will probably give you a few pounds every week to support you. If you're like me or like any sort of normal working person, you don't have that luxury. And it frustrates and annoys the hell out of me that internships in media are not typically paid. Uh, so if you can get a paid one, well done, congratulations. Um, but ju just be aware that you might have to essentially work for free um, but you can try negotiating and you can try asking for payment and sometimes they pay expenses or give you lunch money um, but generally unfortunately these days they're not if i was prime minister of the, of the uk they would be banned tomorrow unpaid in internships anyway that's something you can deal with as and when you get to it and the other responsibility of course is to complete the assessment for jee uh, our responsibilities, help from the university, obviously tutors will give you guidance, advice, encouragement and references if you need one. Um, and also we occasionally get details of available internships. In fact, I think Adam put a, a post um, out, uh, didn't he, recently, today, yesterday, about the university. There's a magazine at the university which is looking for people to, uh, to join the, uh, the, their mission. Um, so these things crop up quite often. People that we know, contacts we've got in the media and so on. Uh, and last year um, I, I had quite a few of my old students who are now working in journalism organisations who offered internships to the students. Uh, and the other place to look is the UOR, University of Roehampton Career Service. Find their website, really, really good. It's on the, the, the university portal and um, they frequently put details on there of internships that are available. Uh, let me just say at this point, I completely forgot to do a slide here. Um, last year's uh, students, so your predecessors, so they had the summer of Covid to deal with and to their credit they did their magazines and uh, there was one guy who did a dissertation. But also every one of the people in the class last year did their internship. 90% of them were uh, virtual internships, so they were online internships. They were working remotely for a huge variety of organisations. Um, but they did it. So depending on where we are with COVID next year, you might have to do a, a virtual internship uh, in the same way that your predecessors did. So don't be freaked out by it too much because it is possible, it, it is doable. Obviously it's not as good as the real world, just like teaching online is not as good as teaching in real life, um, but it can be done and it is doable. So just be aware, again, we don't know what's going to happen in uh, six months time. <clears throat> or even before that. So next slide 16. So when should you do your internships? The, the choice is yours folks. The choice is really yours. The, the, the final stake in the ground is December, uh, September the 1st 2021. So you, by then you should have done your internship and submitted your work. So really you need to complete it I'd say by the middle of August really to give you two weeks to write it up. Your choice, how you schedule it, you can maybe do one or two days a week over 15 weeks, for example, or maybe five days a week for six weeks. That's 30 days of engagement. You can choose. You can do bits and pieces. You can do a bit here, a day there, a day here, and so on. You know. I actually suggest, personally, that you start thinking about a second and third semester. So don't do anything this semester. You've got enough to worry about this semester with your, uh, with your assessments. Uh, but I would start thinking January, February uh, from that point onwards. And, and then, of course, you will have a portfolio, a journalism portfolio, which which editors will hope to see. They want to see some of your work. Um, you'll have more to put on your CV. You'll have a knowledge of law and ethics and so on. And then, of course, you've got the Easter break. I'm not sure when that is exactly. Uh, it varies Easter, March, April. 
uh, to 2021 and then late July and August. You'll notice that the period that I've left out there is the journalism project period, which is May, June. Uh, you can do it, and students in the past have done it. If you do journalism project, say, two days a week, Wednesday when you all get together and another day of doing work on it, then you could possibly do two days a week internship. Or if you have a part-time job, you can squeeze that in somehow as well. So it's all up to you. It depends on your circumstances. It depends on your on 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 your um, uh, on your needs and uh, and uh, what you can offer and when you can do it. The next slide, 17. Um, so a little bit of guidance on what employers are looking for, and I'm sure you know this, any of you who've uh, worked in the media. So basically, what everybody, every employer wants something different, but essentially they want the same thing. They want someone who can do the basics well. So from your the first moment you contact them with that first email they will start judging and assessing you so your first email needs to be well written every everything you do needs to be well written and need, you need to be able to show that you can do research that you can interview that you're well organized these are the things that all employers in the news media want they also want somebody who's accurate i've put that in red because if you send an email to an employer and it's got spelling mistakes in it that's the end of the story unfortunately um, or fortunately depending on how you feel about quality you need to be punctual and reliable and you need to be able to get along with other people. That's pretty much what every employer in the journalism industry wants. And on top of that, this is where you really stand out. Somebody who can offer something different. Maybe you've got skills that nobody else has. Maybe you've got contacts that nobody else has. Maybe you've got ideas uh, that nobody else has. And the other thing I encourage you to do, and this is one of the best things about this group of students and other students, is that within this student we've got great diversity and I always say to students make your diversity work in your favor so if you've got languages how can you use them so if you speak Arabic how can you sell yourself as a bilingual journalist don't just think English 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 think about the languages cultural knowledge so if you grew up in a different country or if your family history is from a different country how can you make that work for you I'll give you an example a couple of years ago I had a student British student her family originally from India, uh, the, the religion, their faith is Sikhism. So she used her Indian heritage and her knowledge of Sikhism to come up with ideas for stories. So get it to work in your favour and also your contacts, people that you know, obviously. So see, see how, think about how you stand out. What is it that makes you stand out? Languages, cultural knowledge, contacts, etc. And try and get that to work in your favour. That's how you're going to really uh, stand out from the crowd. And it is a crowd because a lot of people not just from Roehampton, will be looking for internships next summer. So how will you do it? Um, what I suggest you do, you'll notice there in the orange oval, spring semester. So I suggest don't do this until the spring semester. So in the spring semester, start working on your CV. Um, write it, edit it, rewrite it. You can get guidance from our friends at the Career Service. So if you go to the University of Roehampton Career Service, they do classes on CV writing. They will even have a look at your CV and give you advice on how to make it better. The next thing you'll do, which you'll start to develop in semester two, is to build your portfolio, the work that you will um, that you can show to um, prospective employers as examples of what you can do. Uh, and part of your um, assessment for JEE will be a website, a promotional website, which you can build and edit and check etc and the other thing to do act i would recommend that you actively use twitter and linkedin uh, a really important qualifying point here folks don't forget there's a difference between the personal you and the professional you and i say that because in the past i've seen students use their personal twitter account for their professional contacts too so if you're putting photographs of you and your mates having a crazy wild Halloween night and you're all very drunk and you've got a photograph of that on your Twitter that's not going to go down too well with the professional uh, contacts that you're hoping to uh, to develop okay so I would suggest you have a separate one a Twitter account as you the professional journalist and you get involved you follow editors and other journalists and you get involved in polite discussions about the issues of the world and all the other stuff put it in your personal account and as I say there, if necessary, delineate your social media presence. In other words, draw a line between the personal you and the professional you. It's that's a top tip, that one, folks, because otherwise you can see your career fizzle away before it even starts if you have the wrong photograph. 
Okay, next slide, 19. And um, so you can start, I put there autumn semester, slide 19, you can start doing this now. Um, I, I would suggest that, you know, in a quiet moment when you've stressed and had enough dealing with assessments, uh, just sit down and just write a list of the sorts of organisations or the sort of work you'd like to do. Um, and I always say to my students, aim high. So if you want to be a TV journalist, don't aim at, you know, sort of local cable, you know, you know, southwest London cable TV station. Go for the BBC, go for CNN, go for Al Jazeera, you know, and if they say no, then set your sights a bit lower. But don't do it the other way down. Don't start at the bottom and work up, start at the top. And if you do have ambitions of working, for example, for the BBC or Channel 4 or Al Jazeera or CNN or any of the other big broadcasters, do it now. Apply now, because I know the BBC is absolutely inundated with requests for internships. Go to their website, find the job section, the internship section, find out what you need to do and apply now. Don't leave it until January, February, because I wouldn't be surprised if they say that the cutoff date has already gone. So that applies to all the big, the big, uh, the big uh, media organizations. Think about your areas of interests, your ambitions, your strengths, and you know, follow your dreams. It's a bit of a cliche, but sure, why not? And if you ever get stuck, and especially if you want to work in magazine, and I know that your generation, everything's digital now, but just go to the WH Smith, you know the WH Smith shop, or railway stations, or wherever, or in supermarkets, and they have a big rack of magazines. Uh, or outside tube stations, have a look at the magazines and literally buy one that really interests you. So if you're interested in history, if you're interested in food, if you're interested in, I don't know, sailing, you know, get a magazine and buy it and read it and look at who the editors are and who the key people are. So do your homework. And likewise, TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, websites. Here's a big tip for you. If you want to work in TV and you've seen a programme that you really enjoy, watch the credits at the end and right at the very end it will tell you who the production company is it will say you know abc productions find that production company google them find the people to speak to and apply directly to the production company you know that's the clever way of doing it because you're going direct to the production company rather than channel 4 or bbc or whoever it might be so do some homework on who you want to work for and aim high and go to the places that you think will most feel like home Slide number 20. So there's loads of uh, choices in terms of organisations. So with large organisations, BBC, Al Jazeera, um, NBC, Channel 4, all of that, they will typically have a section on the website that says careers or jobs or internships. That's where these opportunities will exist. Now the problem about going to the large organisations is that everybody else is going there as well, because that's the most obvious place to go. Point number six, I've said avoid the crowds. So by all means apply for the BBC and Al Jazeera, but go to other places as well. Smaller organisations like individual magazines, but like I said, buy the magazine, find out who the editor is and send an email directly to him or her. Here's another idea, individual journalists. Um, individual journalists, particularly investigative journalists, they, they sometimes want researchers, people helping them doing the research that will inform their journalism. So if you've got a, a journalist who you're who you admire greatly, a, a wonderful investigative journalist, get in touch with them directly. Tell them where you're at and say, you know, I would like to do help you in some way and it would count towards my internship. You'll be doing proper journalism research in this case. Um, there are some journalism job websites. There's one called Press Gazette. Google it, find it, see what you can find on there. And there's one called Gorkana as well. And there's various other ones which uh, they might actually be on the University of Roehampton Careers site. And also, something that you sometimes forget, but think about your friends, your family, friends of friends, etc. Do you know anybody who works for media organisations um, that could give you some kind of shortcut to getting an opportunity? Um, if you think about it, we, we, we sometimes forget how many people we know, especially when you get old. Uh, so think about people you've met, people you've worked for, think about your mates, think about their partners, think about aunties, uncles, cousins, you know, is there anybody who can uh, possibly open a door for you? And just to reiterate point number six, avoid the crowds. So get creative. There's loads of, believe it or not, there's loads of opportunities out there. Um, but just, just don't just go BBC Guardian Channel 4 because that everybody's doing it. Do it, but also do these other things as well. 
So, and as I said, I'd suggest you start doing that now. Just put the list together. Just start dreaming. You know, just start thinking about where you want your internship to go. Oh, can I just say one more thing as well uh, about internships? Um, uh, the, over the years, there have been some, you know, some wonderful um, internships my, my students have done. I'm just trying to think a few years ago. Uh, there was one girl and she, wh she wanted to be a food journalist and she found a food and drink magazine uh, in South London that I'd never heard of and she did her internship there. So that's a good example of following your dreams. That's what she wanted to be, a food journalist. She found a food and drink magazine and that's where she did her internship. Um, another student a couple of years ago, uh, she wanted to work in radio. She got a job for an uh, internship with an organisation called Hoxton Radio, which it, Hoxton, if you don't know, is a very trendy part of East End of London. So she worked on that radio station. Another student, she was a, a big rugby fan and she managed to get an internship at a, a leading sports radio station called Talk Sport. Uh, so that was good. And also another one talking about your cultural background. Uh, two years ago, I had a Polish student called Kasia and uh, we had a chat about internships. And she said she was really interested in sort of geopolitics and so on. And I said, why don't you see if you can get a, a position at the Polish embassy in London? Well, lo and behold, that's what she did. So she worked in the press office at the Polish embassy. So that's thinking beyond the obvious. That's not just journalism. That's political communication. So that's acceptable as a job. And Kasia, incidentally, beyond that, she then went to work for the United Nations in New York. How about that for a job? You know? So, so think... Th all of you have got languages, anybody who comes from a different country, anybody who's got a family ancestry that goes to India or Africa or wherever it might be, that's a real advantage because you've got two strings to your bow, as we say. You've got all the British media working in English, but you also might have, you know, I don't know, working in Hindi or working in Swahili or working in Arabic or whatever it might be. OK, that's the end of my pitch. Questions? Haifa. You just mentioned uh, cultures. So, with this uh, internship podcast in, in English, can I do it in Turkish or French? Oh, that's such a good question. And I, sh I should have guessed you were going to ask that because that's a good question. Can you do it? Oh, man. Part of me wants to say. Can I work for just radio, for example? Yeah. <laughs> Part of me wants to say yes, of course, Haifa. Might the other part of me? The other part of me is worried about uh, the process of assessing your work. So if you submit your report and you say that I wrote some really good articles in Turkish or Arabic, then we're not going to be able to read them. You know, so that's so that's kind of my problem. Um, can we hold off on that question? It's a really relevant question, but and, and I'm sorry I can't answer it. My has my my impulse is to say yes. But I could get overruled by the bureaucracy on that one, right? But you've got so many languages anyway, Haifa. You've got such an enormous choice, right? <laughs> I'm, working on, I'm working on gaining more. Actually. I'm sure you'll have about 20 before long. No, no, my limit is eight. I think with, with, with 10 languages, you can speak to the whole world, I think, pretty much. Okay, and so sorry I couldn't answer that one specifically, Haifa, but, but it's a good question. Any more questions, folks? Just shout them out. I have videoed this uh, session, by the way, so I'll, I'll put it on uh, YouTube and you can refer back to it. But, but I think just looking down the list of who's here from what I know about you, you've all got, you've all got something to offer. Seriously, folks, because I've had tutorials with all of you. About half of you, at least, have got second and third and fourth languages. Um, a lot of you have got cultural backgrounds which suggest that you could go beyond the obvious. You know, so you, and you, and you, you know, you're all very switched on and very engaged, which is uh, one of the defining characteristics of this group. You're all, you're all taking your studies very seriously, so I don't doubt that you'll do some good stuff. So let me just, let me just um, round off. So with the Dissertation Journalism Project, folks, just let me know before uh, December the 18th. I am going to probably send you out a, an email just to give you a little nudge to remind you. So that's what you need to do there. With the inter internship, just be aware of what you need to do. That was the purpose of today's session to tell you what the assessment was, what's allowable, what's not allowable, uh, give you a bit of encouragement about how to find work. But don't really, I wouldn't suggest doing anything substantial on your internship until spring. But you can certainly start by drawing up a list of organisations you want to work for, what sort of stuff you want to do. And like I said, if you want to go, and I recommend you, that you do, by the way, BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, 
any of the other organizations news organizations that that you know top quality stuff you know and think about the, the example from Kasha as well think about embassies think about political communication think about you know trade officers you know or uh, NGOs like Amnesty International Oxfam Christian Aid um, you know Medicine, what's it called, the French one, Medicine Sans Frontières, you know, organisations like that, they do great work and they need communicators, you know, so you can do anything like that as well. Think about those noble charities that do great work overseas. There's an idea for your Haifa, because I'm sure you know plenty of those, right? They, 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 they need people with uh, multilingual people who can write and uh, communicate. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Any more questions, folks, before we go on our merry ways? Either wave your hand or say something, or we will go. Okay, folks, um, so I'll put the video on uh, YouTube and I'll send a link uh, when, I've, when I've edited it slightly. Okay, thanks, folks. Thanks for your time. Take it easy. Bye.